quite a morning. Uh, I want to start by thanking our host, um, Minister Advezi, not just for everything he did to make this possible, but also for his words, which were uh, deep, wise, and frankly, uh, very inspiring. Thank you. Thank you, Ed, very much for that. Very much. And I also want to thank the Baroness for being a leader of change. And it's good. We can learn from the experiences you shared with us. Thank you very much for that. And Avri, when she got off the stage, she told me, you see, for all the grief I gave you, you know, you give us uh, uh, this, uh, this award. She it doesn't give grief. She is, frankly, um, for me, a teacher, someone who um, puts all her heart and all her beliefs in everything she does at ICANN. And for that, we're grateful to you. So congratulations. Thank you. And uh, of course, uh, Lebanon, the country where I grew up, is a special place for me. And I remember going to visit their prime minister and telling him, why don't we, uh, in the midst of a country that is struggling through a lot of crises, why don't we do something for the young people in this country? Why don't we build a true uh, multi-stakeholder, bottom-up internet governance body in a country that is struggling to govern so many things. But it's, uh, I've lived through that struggle in Lebanon, and I'm immensely proud of the uh, achievement that Link has made. Thank you, Imad, for being an agent of change as well, in a part of the world where bottom-up is not always possible, uh, and you've made it happen. So thank you very much. And, and finally, I, I, I cannot um, tell you how important it is for us to have heard from the new Minister of Cyber Affairs in China. Uh, Minister Liu Wei spoke important words today. He is here at an ICANN meeting, recognizing the partnership that ICANN has had with China and will continue to have. And I thank him for embracing the Net Mundial outcome, uh, a, an outcome that supports us working together as a multi-stakeholder community to advance internet governance. And I am very confident that as we work together, we will be able to find clear paths forward for the nation that boasts a quarter of the internet users of the world. And clearly where the next, many of the next billion users will come from, for that nation to come closer to uh, these great institutions and to work with us to strengthen us and we will strengthen them. So welcome and thank you for the words you said. Well, I started this journey with you a couple of years ago and we talked about the new season. We're still working hard. We're no, nowhere near where the harvest has started yet but we certainly are in the phase of hard work in this new season. And we continue to, with the hope that as we transition ICANN into its next version, into the version that uh, makes ICANN completely independent and truly dependent on its stakeholders and its multi-stakeholder model is an important phase that we're still in the middle of. But for a minute, let me go back to ICANN 1. This is a picture from ICANN 1. Uh, you see, is Esther in the room by now? Is she here? Okay, that's Esther Dyson again, uh, chairwoman of ICANN at that time. And uh, ICANN 1 was a very, very d special time for the internet community. At that time, 4% of the world was on the internet. There were only three regional internet registries, TLDs, CCTLDs, but no CCNSO and certainly no IDN CCTLDs. And half of the users of the internet were in North America. We come to today, 40% of the world population is on the internet, and half of them are in Asia now, not in North America. 285 CCTLDs, of which 36 are IDNs, and 150 members of the CCNSO bringing this world together. And when we finish our five-year plan that we're on, 
uh, in 2020, uh, then 63% of the population will be online. And obviously with far less Latin keyboards, with a lot more keyboards that represent the diversity of this great planet we live on. So we come from ICANN 1 to ICANN 50. A lot of change, except for one thing that cannot change, our core values. Our core values must remain with us as we move into the next phase. And if you look into our bylaws, right on the first page, our core values can be extracted. Diversity, fairness, integrity, creativeness, effectiveness, responsiveness, and transparency. And these values were there from the beginning. We found this picture from ICANN 1. They were discussing what does transparency mean and how they would work on be remaining transparent. <laughs> so lots has changed, but our core values will not change. These we keep because it is what drives us. It is what keeps us here. It is what makes this, as of last night, 3,343 registered people are at this meeting. This is by far a testament to where we are today. I want to cover five things with you quickly this morning uh, in my normal update on what is happening with ICANN. First, the IANA stewardship, an important area that is getting a lot of our focus and attention at this meeting. Now, I have blogged that the IANA stewardship has four tracks of work. I'm not going to cover all four. I'll focus on the first two quickly. Of course, first and foremost, ICANN accountability. We must strengthen our accountability. We must be clear what are we accountable for and to whom. And we must do that together. And our commitment to do that is real. It is not just another checkbox. We have to do it. And if we do not do it, then we do not maintain our core values, which we've had from day one. Now, we have launched the process. Many of you have seen since May 6, we put out a proposal. That proposal is just what it is. It's a proposal. We need to hear from you. Do we need a working group? Is there a better way to do it? What other mechanisms and methodologies we use? This is the time for all of us to discuss this and to agree together how to actually strengthen our accountability. Uh, last night, I had a, a meeting with one of the ministers here from Europe, and sh she and I were chatting about the importance of accountability and how this is the roadmap to ensuring that an independent ICANN is an accountable ICANN. We are committed to that. On this second track, which is the track most of us are focused on, we have received over a thousand email comments and many proposals after the meeting in Singapore. A thousand email comments. We sifted through all of this. And after a lot of analysis and work, we have produced on June 6th a proposed process for starting the transition of the IANA stewardship from the US government to the ICANN community. This is an important document, which we will discuss again at this meeting. But it's a document that calls for the creation of a coordination group of 27 members representing 13 parts of our great internet community, all coming together to figure out what's the best course forward in order to uh, end the unique relationship that the US government has had with ICANN. Now, it is important to note that ICANN's role in this picture is very much a facilitator. We are not driving. We are not supposed to be driving. And if you see me or ICANN driving, do stop us. This is your process. This is the community's process. And through it, I am certain that when we remove the training wheels that ICANN has had in the great stewardship of the US government, we will be steady through this process that we will do together. Now, if you want to participate more in all these tracks, we have two important meetings on Thursday. Do attend, do participate, and please do give us input. This is your process again, and 
I'm glad that we have these two important sessions that will squeeze some time out of our public forum, but they are critical for us to be on the same page. My second area of focus is the globalization and hardening of ICANN operations. We are on a journey. I think we have about two to maybe three years to go before, frankly, I'm comfortable that ICANN operations are where they need to be. But that journey has started, and we're already moving forward. And at the heart of the hardening of our operations is also to globalize it. Now, in normal places I've worked, you don't do this at the same time. You typically sequence these. <laughs> you harden the operations, and then you start thinking how to globalize. Unfortunately, here at ICANN, we don't have that luxury of time. We had to move on both. And so we've laid out a set of activities that are very important to go on this mission. I'm summarizing them here for you, just so you get a sense. Expanding our outreach channels. How are we doing that? By starting to bring the ICANN engagement into other fora. It doesn't always have to happen at ICANN meetings. So we are discovering that there are many places where we can do that. We are building service channels. For the first time, you can pick up the phone in China any time of day while you're awake and call ICANN, and someone will answer you in your language and help you. And we're expanding that model across many regions. And we intend to have a 24 by 5 ICANN line in more than 20 languages available. So we're working towards that. We tested it. It's been a very big success, and we will expand it. Community-driven language localization. So yes, we stuck for a long time with the UN languages plus Portuguese. But who says these are the only languages? Huh? So we need to go beyond that. How are we doing this? By building relationships locally. I want to call out Korea. South Korea has done a great job partnering with us so that our materials are available in South Korea in the language of the people who need to participate in ICANN. And we plan to expand this in other places. Thank you, Korea. I see the <laughs> Korean delegation here. Thank you for that. And we will do this in other parts of the world. Yes, and in China as well, in China as well. We just signed, actually, and I'm glad the Minister Lu Wei is reminding me that we just signed under his leadership and the leadership of the MIIT, our partners in China, an important MOU yesterday that allows us to also start working closely with China on localizing ICANN and making sure we are truly understanding the local needs and they're understanding what ICANN does. We are in enlarging our touch points around the world. The touch points come in hubs, and they come also in uh, individuals that we have around the globe. I can will have about 300 people on staff by, this, uh, by the end of this fiscal year in a few weeks. And these people are spread all over the globe as we have frozen new employment in Los Angeles unless in highly exceptional cases. Now, I want to focus a little bit on the hubs for decentralized operations. Our ability to become global is only possible if we start truly decentralizing our operations. And decentralizing operations, something I've done in other places before, does not mean simply sending people from Los Angeles to work in other places. It means actually taking a whole function and starting to move it to work elsewhere and making this other location the center of excellence for that function. And we're doing this in Istanbul and in Singapore. I'll give you one example of a successful shift this way. Uh, this shift uh, occurred with the uh, compliance department. Compliance is an area, when I arrived at ICANN two years ago, that I heard an earful from you on. We need to get compliance working well. And so today, I'm happy to tell you that in 2011, we had only five staff employees. Today, we have uh, 16 in LA, three in Istanbul, and two because we have one new employee who start today, so we now have two in Singapore. And they work 24 hours a day, so compliance can answer your re the requests of the community 24 hours a day in nine languages, and they have started to standardize processes. So when you file a compliance issue in Singapore at 2 p.m. in Singapore, but then you follow up with somebody who wakes up in Istanbul later, 
that case is standardized, it's in a system, and we can follow through for you around the world. This is just an example of how we need ICANN to serve the world in your language, in your time zone, not when we're awake, but when you need us. There will be many meetings at this London meeting to discuss the globalization and operational excellence of ICANN. Please do attend these meetings. They're very important. And on that note, I just want to tell you, to those of you who've been very helpful in the criticality of our operations, please keep doing it. I want to uh, really thank the registry group, for example, for sending us a 27-page letter of areas where we can improve. We are taking it to heart. We already formed a team to embrace everything in that letter and work with you so we can improve our operations. You need to be critical. If you're not, we won't get better. So please do continue with this level of focus and help on making us a better place to serve you. Third, I want to thank this amazing group led by my friend uh, Jean-Francois Baril. They came together when the community was telling me it's been a decade and we can't get these directory services to actually advance. Who is was created for a different technical reason. It was really at a different time. Now we are relying on it to really have directory services. These are two different things. And so we launched this great effort uh, led by Jean-Francois. And I want to tell you that the report they came up with is simply input to us as a community so that we can take it. And yesterday we met with the GNSO. They will take this report, study it, do whatever they want with it. But the decisions on how we evolve directory services for the internet and the world will come from our GNSO. That's where the decision lies. This is simply input to you. But it's valuable input. It's valuable input. It's important input. Please do meet with the team when you see them. And I want to tell you that the new proposal they put on the table for all of us to study has incredible focus on privacy and an important set of safe safeguards on who can get to see this data. So it's important. This will affect our internet. So please participate. I want to ask the people on this working group to stand up because we should all thank them for the incredible work they did. Are they here? Here you go. Please, stand up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jean-Francois. Thank you. And they will have two meetings, one today at 3.15, uh, so you can all hear them describe the report, and also there will be another discussion, a set of discussion sessions uh, later today and on Wednesday. Fourth, the GDD, as we call it, our Global Domains Division, did not exist exactly a year ago. A year ago, we came to the conclusion with great input from you that we need to give focus to the division that serves the growing needs of not just the GTLD, but the CCTLD and other identifiers that we are managing for the internet. And so, we, under the leadership of my friend Akram Atalla, we have built a new division. And that division continues to grow and build services. Now again, we still have a lot of work to do. But please understand, a year ago, we put our hands together to build a lot of services, a lot of systems, a lot of capabilities while the program was flying. <laughs> Again, in most places I've worked before, we should have put that program on hold for a few years while we build all these things. But we didn't because the community was clear. We needed to move forward. So we built as we went. And of course, that means sometimes we have hiccups. But we're on top of it. I want you to know that. With the leadership of our new operations team, Susanna Bennett and Ash Rangwin, our new Chief Information and Innovation Officer, we are really putting our heart and our time and our focus and excellence into making sure these services work well for you. 440 new GTLDs contracted. Remember when we were all worried the contracting function will not keep up with the market needs? We are ahead of the market needs. We have a lot of people we're waiting to hear from now. 
because we built a good process for contracting. We have 320 new GTLDs already delegated. And eBureaus are up and running in case of emergencies. Hopefully, we'll never need to use them, but they're there and they're ready regionally. And we just held our first auction in order to keep the process moving forward. This is good success. Are we there fully? No. But we're committed, and we will keep sure that this division serves you very well in the months and years ahead. Again, if you want to meet the people in this division, they're all here. Please do go and connect with them at these important sessions that will be taking place at ICANN 50. Fourth, internet governance. Internet governance probably took all the oxygen out of the meeting in uh, uh, Buenos Aires and also a bit in Singapore. Today, it's my fourth item. Why? Because a lot of good things have happened. And because we need to attend to our needs here at ICANN as well. So we have to find that balance. And I did. I can personally tell you that the successes we made at Net Mundial, as mentioned by many people before me, the Net Mundial principles are groundbreaking. Not because they're new. Many of you here have seen these principles before. But because of how we came up with them together. And I want to publicly thank Brazil and thank President Rousseff for her amazing leadership in bringing this conference together. And then after that, with the leadership of President Tumas Ilves of Estonia and the support of many colleagues like Vint Cerf of Google and the president of Samsung from South Korea, Francesco Caio from Italy, and many others, and ISOC with the presence of Kathy Brown, we actually uh, went back and we built a model for how these principles will work. This model was produced by the panel on internet governance mechanisms and was published after Net Mundial. The model calls for a distributed internet cooperation ecosystem. Key word here, distributed internet cooperation ecosystem. As Minister Vesey said, we do not want a centralized way to manage internet governance. We want mechanisms and processes that are highly distributed, that allow us to address all the issues of internet governance in an effective, legitimate, and, and acceptable way to all the stakeholders where they all participate with equal access to the process. Now, what do we do from here? In a way, Net Mundial built the design, the panel built the blueprint, and now we need a contractor, or maybe a number of contractors, to build this vision. We are going to work together, and in the weeks and months ahead, you will hear about alliances and coalitions of different organizations coming together. What this means for us, I can. It means we will participate, but we don't have to be forward. We can be with all the others. We can participate as we have done for years. But we no longer need to lead because we think now that the wave of leadership can be broadened to a, a bigger alliance and a bigger coalition of people. I want to leave you with our core values. It's the only thing that will stay. I remember today, like now, November 28, 1980. I was... 18. And my father put me on a lorry heading to Syria to escape the war in Lebanon. He did not know the lorry driver. He literally waved the first lorry he saw on the main road and told him, take my son, here's $400, buy him a ticket from Damascus to get out of Lebanon. And he put me on that lorry and he told me one thing. He said, son, you have to go and make this happen. But one thing, don't forget your core values. Don't forget who you are. That's all he said. And I disappeared, of course, into Damascus and Geneva and then Los Angeles. And here we are 35 years later. And that's the only thing that's left. My father is gone. The war is gone. Lots of things are gone. But the core values he left me with are here today. It's what drives me. And ICANN 
for those of you who have not had yet my two-year experience. ICANN is a difficult place to be, but it's the most wonderful place to build community. Today, someone stopped me in the hallway. They said, she's from the Dominican Republic. She was saying, this is amazing. I've never seen a place like this, where people work together with common values to build something together. There aren't many places like ICANN in the world. Let's preserve it. These are our guides. Let's live them, not just talk them. And that means harmony amongst us in the next few days. We need a lot of harmony that guides us to live by these principles. Can we have some harmony? Thank you very much, and good morning to you all. It's wonderful for us to be here. We are only men allowed, and it's great to be here with you at this wonderful event this morning. Uh, now, our first piece was, of course, Men of Harlech, which is a piece that is at the core of the Welsh male choral tradition. And we, as a group, are very passionate about embracing that tradition, but also developing it and hopefully moving that tradition forward. And 
in the same vein, as an organisation, uh, we're very keen to embrace the digital era in which we live. And therefore, we're very proud to announce that we will be founder members and also the first recording artists to use the .cymru.wales domain name. <laughs> yes, indeed. And we're very much looking forward to spreading the word as we tour America later in the year. So we will be taking Dot Cymru and Dot Wales to the world, and we're looking forward to that. Um, now, anyway, back to the music, and a piece from a musical by Benny and Bjorn. And to finish, this is Anthem from Chess. Jochen Varian. So AC Leaders Band, please. <laughs> <laughs> or the board. <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> thank you. I know this was a gift from our friends in Wales. And thank you, Baroness. I know you had a hand in this. We appreciate it very much. I will let you go, but I want to remind us of two important things. At this meeting, we have something very unique. In addition to the ICANN meeting that we're all in now, there are two parallel meetings going on. The first is a high-level ministerial meeting that was called by His Excellency Ed Vesey. So many people in the room are ministers and ambassadors and other dignitaries that are here in order to spend the rest of the day together. Uh, and this is an important day for them to also look at ICANN 50 as a springboard for internet governance around the world. So we thank uh, the British government for arranging for that meeting. Now, closer to our home plate, we also have a, very, a second very important meeting going on here. It's called ATLAS. ATLAS is the meeting where all the, the people from our structures around the world come together once in a while. They've done it last time, what, five years ago, Sebastian, in Mexico? And this is the second time they do it. 
It's a great gathering. I had the privilege of stopping by to see them yesterday. But this is a third meeting happening in parallel to bring the more than 150 ICANN at large structures together in a single meeting so they can discuss how the people who touch the users, who are the users of the internet, can actually help us make sure that the work we do here serves everyone. So congratulations to Atlas and to our at-large structures. Have a wonderful week. If we can be of help, stop us, many ICANN people here in the hallways, or stop anybody, including Minister Vesey, myself, Minister Louet, and ask for directions. I know this hotel can use some. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye. <laughs>